Class, what's up? Today we are going to continue our notes um, from Chapter 6, and we're going to jump into arc length and sectors for the most part. Now, before we jump into that, uh, there's a little bit more that we want to do about angles. And what I want you to understand is just like meters can go down to decimeters, centimeters, millimeters, etc., or go up, right? It can, it can go up to decameters, uh, I don't even know them all kilometers, etc., etc. Degrees kind of do the same thing, all right? Degrees kind of do the same thing. So we know that one revolution around a circle is 360 degrees, all right? Or one revolution is equal to 360 degrees. What I am here to tell you is that inside of one degree, like if we go f down, if we if we like convert it down to a smaller unit of measurement, we're gonna say that there are 60 minutes. All right, 60 minutes. So one degree is equal to 60 minutes. Please note when you're talking about minutes, it's just a single apostrophe. All right. Um, and then also we know that if we go down further from minutes, we can go down into yeah, seconds. All right, one minute has 60 seconds. So we know that in one minute there are 60 seconds. Uh, please just note, right, minutes apostrophe, the quotation mark for seconds, okay, quotation mark for seconds. So please get used to this notation. Uh, then what we do also know is that if we have one degree, we can convert it directly into seconds by doing 60 times 60 or 3600 seconds. All right. This one I don't think you're going to need to know as much, but these are just good to understand and know that we can break down degrees. Just like instead of saying 1.5 hours, or eh, let's, is that a good example? Yeah, sure, 1.5 hours, uh, you can say is 1 hour 30 minutes, right? So this is just another way. Now when you see DMS, that hopefully should set off this idea, degrees, minutes, seconds. All right, so DMS just stands for degrees, minutes, seconds. Now, as we move on to these examples, converting from degrees, minutes, seconds into just degree form could be really challenging. We're gonna we're gonna simplify it for you guys. Okay, we're gonna make it easy. We're gonna use our calculator. If we were gonna do this by hand, you would need to convert this 12 seconds into minutes, and then add that to this 30 minutes, and then you'd have 30 point something minutes. You'd have to convert that to degrees, and then you'd have to tack that on. All right. Let's think about this. We know that all of this extra stuff, the 12 seconds, the 30 minutes, that's all going to be after the decimal, all right? So we know if you have 81 degrees, 30 minutes, blah, 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 you're gonna have 81 degrees. Now we need to figure out what, fr or sorry, what decimal that is, and let's figure out how to do that on our calculator. So on your calculator, um, there's this menu here, second angle, all right? If you go to the second angle, you have a degree symbol, you have a minute symbol, that's there's no second symbol okay so we'll need we'll need to talk about that in a second but we know that we can start to type this out I can type 81 and then go back to second angle and put in degrees so 81 degrees and I can put 30 minutes now the seconds you cannot and I'm gonna do it just to show you what you cannot do you cannot do this you cannot put two minutes or two apostrophes. That is not going to get you the right answer. So delete, delete. What you need to do is you need to find the second symbol or the quotation sign. And it's actually, if we slide up a little bit, it should be right here, right? Do we see that quotation symbol? So to get the, or the, sorry, the minutes, sorry, ah, second symbol, you need to hit second and then the plus sign. What did I just do? Alpha, not second, alpha and then the plus sign. And now when you hit enter, oh my gosh, it gives it to you in just degree form. Now hopefully, I'll leave it like that, hopefully this makes sense, right? 30 minutes is half, right? If there are 60 minutes in one degree and there's 30 minutes here, well then it should be right about half, perfect. If we do one more, it's the same exact idea. So 50 degrees, 20 minutes, 21, Ah, I did it again. 
don't, don't hit second, hit alpha. My bad. Alpha, quotation mark, and we're good. 50 point, and then I'm going to round this to 3, 4 degrees. <clears throat> okay? Awesome. When we're trying to convert to DMS form, I want you to understand that, again, this is all calculator. All right? So you type in 45.53. And then what we're going to do, guys, we're going to go back to that angle menu. And if you notice number 4 right here, this says convert to DMS. So I'm going to hit that, hit enter, and we've got it. 45 degrees, 31 minutes, 48 seconds. Pretty easy, right? All right, let's see what happens when we do this next one. 21.256, second angle, and hit number four for degrees, minutes, seconds. And we get 21 degrees, 15 minutes. And I'm going to round this, guys. We usually like to, if we're using degrees, minutes, seconds, we like to use integers. So I'm going to round this to 22 seconds. But again, please notice, like we had 21 point blank degrees, blah, 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 degrees. So we have 21 degrees at the end, or 45 point blah, 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 degrees, 45 degrees. So hopefully that makes sense. So what we really need to understand, these commands are located in the angle menu. And for those of you that need it, that means you have to go to second and then apps. All right? Beautiful. Okay, let's move on. Let's get into some arc length and sect area of sectors. This is good stuff. All right. Um, what I need you guys to understand is what I mean by arc length. Okay, what do I mean by arc length? Well, arc length is the length around the circle but just like a little section of it, right? It's just a little part, right? What do we call it if we go all the way around the circle? Length. Uh, let me, length of, let me change that. Length all the way around a circle. We call that the what? Circumference circumference I don't think I spelled that right but I'm going with it for right now circumference okay and we know that C is equal to 2 pi R so what I need you guys to understand is the arc length is just a fraction of the circumference it's a fraction of the circumference, and the fraction we get by using angles, all right? We know that if this is 60 degrees, right, if I make this up, this is 60 degrees, well, the entire circle is 360, so this piece right here is 60 out of 360, and so if we want the arc length, we would do 60 over 360, and then multiply it by the circumference. So let's write some formulas here. We have S equals, and S is going to be our arc length. But it's always going to be theta over 360 degrees. I'm going to put a degree symbol here as well, um, and I'll talk to I'll talk about that in a second. But so theta over 360 degrees times 2 pi r. So that is one option. And now what I want you guys to think about is what would happen if we were in radians instead. All right. So now s equals. I'm going to use theta again. But am I going to put a degree symbol? No. And this, what's all the way around a circle, or how many degrees in radians, I should say, how many radians are in a circle? Well, there's 2 pi. All right, so theta over 2 pi, and then times 2 pi r. Let me put these in parentheses so we understand. All right, now, if you want to, I'd rather you understand conceptually that you're taking whatever angle you have, dividing it by the total degrees or total radians and multiplying it by the circumference, but I do want you to understand that this can clean up. If I change colors here, I don't want to like stress you out at all, but it, you could cancel out these two pi's and you could just be left with s equals r theta. Now you need to understand, does this work if you're in degrees? Absolutely not. This only works 
in radians. And that's why I almost don't want you to just memorize this. I'd rather you understand conceptually what you're doing. You're taking the entire circumference and multiplying it by the fraction all right, that you get from your angles. What's really nice, guys, is area of sector works the exact same way, but now we don't care about circumference, right? I don't want to know how much around. I want to know how much of the total area. So we need to remember that area of a circle is what? Pi r squared? Absolutely. Good. And so because of that, and actually I should write this too, this is a fraction of the total area because with that in mind hopefully you guys already know what these formulas are gonna be we're gonna say that if we want the area well you're gonna have to do theta over 360 times pi r squared or if we go into radian mode we would have theta over 2 pi times pi r squared now once again, when you're in radians, there it's a little easier because some some things can cancel, right? I can cancel out the pi's if I wanted to, which means I then have what? I have a fraction, right? One half. So I would say area equals one half r squared, and then there's my theta at the end. Okay. Again, one half comes from this two in the denominator times r squared times theta. Now, and again, I will make this note just so we remember, only works in radians. And I'll say it one more time. I know I've beaten a dead horse. I'd really rather you understand conceptually what you're doing here. I'd rather you understand that you're taking the fraction of the total area or the fraction of the circumference. But if you become comfortable enough with it, then I'm okay with you using these these extra formulas. Okay? So now let's put this to work a little bit, all right? <clears throat> we want to find the length of the arc of a circle of radius 2 subtended by a central angle of 0.25 radians, all right? This word subtended, I'm just going to go with like cut off, something like that. Cut off by a central angle. So we have a circle. Ooh. Not the best circle, whatever. Find the length of the arc of radius 2 subtended by a central angle. So, like, I can just make any angle right here, and I know that its measure is 0.25, all right, in radians. Well, what else do I know? I also know the radius is 2, all right? Last thing, please be on the lookout. We want length of arc or arc length so we are in a circumference situation a fraction of the circumference which means I want to use s equals theta over 2 pi times 2 pi r and when we go ahead and we plug everything in it should clean up really really nice let's see s equals okay so 0.25 was my angle in radians over 2 pi times 2 pi and then the radius is 2. So let's double that up. Good. 2 pi's cancel. I just have 0.25 times 2, which is 0.5 or 1 half. All right. 0.25 times 2 is 0.5 or 1 half. Uh, there's no units here, so let's just say units. Be very careful. These are not square units, right? This was length, arc length. So we're just in regular units, not square. All right, now what happens in our next example? Let's take a look. We have, okay, we're looking for the area of a sector, which is good. Um, again, we're in a circle, so I'm going to draw a circle. This time I know that the area is formed by an angle of 30 degrees, so I'm going to draw it. Something like that. doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, do the best you can. 30 degrees, radius of 2. Yep. We've got everything we need again. We have to remember we want area of a sector now, so we're talking area. And we're talking theta. In this case, because I was given it in degrees, I'm going to use degrees. And I'm still going to use pi, let's see, pi r squared. There we go. 
All right, when I plug everything in, let's see what happens. 30 over 360, we can clean that up in a little. Uh, pi times doo -doo -doo -doo, 2 squared. All right, well, let's see here. Let's cancel some stuff out. We can cancel out the zeros. We can cancel out 3 and 36 to 1 and 12. We can change this to a 4. So what do we have here, guys? We actually have 4 pi over 12. Okay, 4 pi over 12, and I can clean that up even more, because what can I do with the 4 and the 12? Goes to 1 and 3. Alright, so this is just pi over 3. Um, we do have feet this time as a unit, so we know that this is pi over 3 feet squared. Please also note, it asks you for the exact answer and as an answer rounded to two decimal places. This is exact, all right? This is what I mean by exact, pi over three. To get the rounded, we type in pi, we divide by three, we get 1.05. 1 1.05 feet squared. All right, all right, let's keep going. All right, when we read this nice big word problem, we see that we have a pendulum Okay, a pendulum, and the pendulum is a brass ball suspended by a thin 55-foot cable. Okay, so if I get this right, I'm thinking that this, it's swinging kind of like this, and this is 55 feet, and we know the ball swings through an angle of 2 degrees, so I know that this is just 2 degrees. What you have to remember, a pendulum, like, think if a pendulum wasn't actually a pendulum, pendulum, it wasn't going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It would be a circle, right? So guys, this is just a crazy arc length problem, right? I could continue this circle, I'm not going to do it, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this pendulum right here is just a little piece, a little sliver of a full circle. Alright, so now we know that if we are looking for the how far it travels, right? I'm not looking for the area. I'm looking to know the distance. And that should tell me that I want arc length. All right, so S equals. Now, I have it in degrees, so I'm going to use theta over 360. And then again, it's times 2 pi. And then our radius in this case is 55. All right, let's see what happens. Um, I could reduce this a little. 2 and 360 reduced to 1 and 180. 2 and 55, right, when I multiply that, that's 110. So the last thing I would really do, guys, is I would probably just reduce the zeros off of this. And now I know that s is equal to 11 pi over 18. And that would be in feet, because my units were feet. Um, on something like this, especially like a, a real real world application, I would completely be okay with you using a calculator. And guys, you know how to use your calculator. I mean, alpha y equals, get a fraction, you can do 2 over 360, you can do 2 and times 55. Notice I kept the pi out of there because I wanted to keep my answer exact, right? So if I hit enter, I get the fraction that I wanted and just understand that the pi is still there, right? So 11 eighteenths, oh, you can't see it. 11 eighteenths, 11 eighteenths, and then you just tack the pi back on. Now, if I multiply this by pi, because I think this would be a better answer, yeah, it, like 1.92 feet. Think about this. Would would you go and tell someone that the pendulum or the distance that the ball swings is 11 pi over 18 feet? Or would you say 1.92? Probably 1.92. But just be able to get both an answers. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We got two more problems. I know this is getting a little lengthy. I'm sorry. What else is new? All right. All right. So our next example, we have two boats leaving a port. 
All right, so we are just going to say that we have our port right here. And we know that we have two boats leaving the port. Okay, we before we get started, we should talk about this, and maybe some of you understand this. This word bearing, bearing is completely different than standard position. Okay, when you're talking about bearings, bearing, when you're measuring angles from a bearing, it's from due north. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, that means that I'm going to talk about this port, and I'm going to talk about this as being due north. So when I draw this and I say that a boat leaves at a 30 degree angle, well, I'm talking about right here. All right, I'm talking about this being 30 degrees. All right, now my next boat is leaving the port at a 50 degree bearing, which means something like this. Not the best picture, I know, but that is my 50 degrees. All right. So I have a boat here. There's a boat. And I have another boat here. There's my other boat. Beautiful boats. Um, I want to know how far apart the boats are. All right. And what I need you guys to understand, we have to make an assumption here. These boats are traveling at the exact same speeds. So they have both gone 42 miles, which means if this piece is 42 and this is 42, those are both kind of like radiuses, radii, in fact. So technically, guys, I could say that this is a circle. And now I know that I just want to get the arc length, right? I want to get the arc length. All right, so we set up our equation. We know that we're going to use S is equal to theta over, we're in degrees, so 360 and then times 2 pi. And we already know that the radius is 42, so I can plug that in too. My question is, what do I use for theta? What do I use for theta? Do I use the 30? Do I use the 50? I hope... I hope, I hope, I hope you're thinking that you actually don't use either of them, right? This 50 degrees would be if I was going from due north to the green boat. The 30 degrees would be if I was going from due north to the purple boat. I'm not doing either of those. This due north is nothing to me. I actually need to figure out the difference in these angles. And if this is 50 and this is 30, well, then the angle I want is 20 degrees. Okay? Theta is equal to 50 degrees minus 30 degrees, or theta is equal to 20 degrees. Okay? And so now this problem turns in, we, we can do this, right? Uh, S equals 20 over 360 times 2 pi times 42. Just to save some time, I'm going to go right to the calculator here. All right? Alpha y equals 20 over 360 times 2 times 42. Delete. What did I do? Okay. There, there we go. That's fine. Remember, I'm not using the pi button. So now I know that the arc length is 14 pi over 3. And that would be in miles. But again, I don't think people are going to give you an answer like that if we're talking about actual units of measure. So I'm going to multiply this by pi and get 14.66, 14.66 miles. All right, I'll box both just so I have them, and there we go. All right, last problem, last problem. We have a city in Montana that is due north of a city in New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Find the distance between Glasgow, 48 degrees 9 minutes north, and Albuquerque, 35 degrees, 5 minutes north. Assume that the radius of the Earth is 3960. 3, okay, so this could be tricky. This could be tricky, but what I need you to understand is that if this city is due north of Albuquerque, well, what I can do is I can draw an Earth. I can draw an Earth. And I can say, well, okay. I know that Albuquerque is 35 degrees north 
right? So maybe like right here, right? There's, I'm gonna just put NM for New Mexico. And I know that that angle right there has to be 35 degrees, five minutes. Well, I can do the same thing with the city in Montana, right? It's gotta be higher up. It's gotta be more north. This one's 48 degrees. So I'm gonna draw something like this. I'm gonna put my M there so I know that this is Montana. And what again I need you to understand is what am I going to do? Like I want this right here. I want this right here, that distance between them. Well that tells me guys that I need this angle. I need this theta. So what you're going to have to do again guys, you're going to have to say theta equals and you got to find the difference, right? You know that from here to Montana was 48 degrees, 9 minutes. New Mexico was 35. So you need to find the difference. So 48, 9, minus 35, 5. And what do we get? 48, 9, minus 35, five. Did I do it right? I think so. And we hit enter. All right. I am going to actually keep that in degrees, minutes, seconds for right now. So I'm going to go to degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay. So 13, four, I guess I could have just done that in my head, but guys, now we're ready to go. Now we know, because again, we're looking for distance which means we're looking for that arc length right there. We're going to use S equals. Now I'm going to use 13 degrees, 4 minutes, over 360 degrees. And I'm going to multiply it by 2, ah, 2 times pi times the radius of the circle. And well, this circle is the Earth, so the radius is 3960. And again, just save yourself some trouble. Go to your calculator. Alpha y equals for a fraction. I'm going to just hit second answer because my answer is still 30, 13 degrees, 4 minutes. Over 360 times 2 times 3960. And I get, oof. So s equals 43, 1, 2. Don't forget the pi, right? We did everything but the pi on the calculator. You need to put the pi in. So that's how many miles are between those two cities. However, I don't want to write it like that, so I'm going to now take this fraction, multiply it by pi, and then we will be done. Absolutely good. So 903.10 miles, and that is our lesson for today. Lots and lots of good word problems using arc length and area of sector. All right, sorry this video took so long. Um, you know, I just get really excited with arc length. I hope that this stuff makes sense and we will practice more in class. Have a good one.